so um, I'm here in, well, in the proportions, beautiful, beautiful big office warehouse thing here with Thomas Sherman's. And um, so Thomas, we've we've been talking this morning about this this idea of socially driven business and the work you're doing with Sujol is I think a really nice example of, of, of what you guys do in terms of uh, so so I wonder if you could tell me a little bit about this idea if you, I mean we you, you explained to me this idea that the business is it's not a defensive thing it's a really positive thing it is I think social business on itself is very positive and to tell you a little bit more about social business I think it's the best of both worlds it's about defining a social purpose you want to serve and you want to serve it by the means of doing business and that's um, actually the best of both because when you talk about a social purpose you can create kind of a mutual understanding of different people you want to get involved because who doesn't want to enhance the quality of life but secondly when you talk about okay how do you achieve that you want to talk about the means of doing business instead of doing philanthropy. Yeah. And it's very um, energetic to think about, okay, when we are able to create products or services that drives the social need you want to address, it is able to scale, actually. Yeah. And you can make it profitable yeah. while being affordable for the consumer group. Yeah then you have a, a, a mechanism that scales. And that's the great thing of doing business. It's scalable. Yeah. So with Sujol, I mean, basically Sujol is putting, putting in place a social business network that, that, to supply, that, that would supply water. It involves some quite innovative technology. But it's very easy for people to mistake Sujol as a technology-driven thing. And it's not at all, is it? It is not, actually. It's, it's a very important component. But what I would like to say is that a social business on itself is the sum of different components. It can be uh, product components, but also service components. And how do you get there? It's about understanding the community. Yeah. So the success of a social business is really about involving the community you want to serve yeah. in designing the business so you need to understand, in the case of Sujol, it's about the, the, the problem or the challenge we face in, in arsenic-contaminated water. It's um, death cause number one in Bangladesh. So we talk about a huge social problem. Um, when we talk about, okay, how can we solve that? It's about understanding the, the problems of arsenic. Yeah. One of the components to solve that arsenic from the water is... Uh, a water filter technology yeah. but that's just one component how can you really make it a successful business it's about thinking okay what is actually this, the need you're going to address because communities here in the Netherlands or in Bangladesh are all the same we are just consumers we have aspirations so we shouldn't consider them as, as, as um, uh, really poor people that don't have any uh, uh, purchase power yeah. no we really should see them as, as consumers with aspirations and pride yeah. and when you understand the context locally you can involve them in, in finding ways okay how do we communicate the water how do we distribute the water how can we involve local entrepreneurs in selling the water and making a business out of it so you, you said something really interesting to me before which was this idea of, of, of how do you involve because you commercial organizations industri industrial companies you know it's the likes of the, the coca-colas of this world the the mobile phone companies that get that get the mobile cards right down into every village and um, that they're, they're very effective at certain things um, but you you talked also about the, the potential future role of ngos and that's that's not so much a defensive one where they have feel they have to work with companies it was a different kind of role. Tell me a bit more about that. Absolutely. I think NGOs uh, might have two motivations uh, to get into the field of social business. First of all, they see that subsidies dry up, so they need to find other ways to find money, uh, find other ways to partner with corporates. Um, but the proactive or the opportunity they have as an NGO is really about becoming an innovation partner for social businesses. Yeah. The assets that NGOs have 
is that they know the, the communities. They have the local uh, entrance to communities. Um, and they can really use that knowledge in transforming that into business opportunities. Great. Well, great to see you. And um, yeah, it's going to be... I mean, what the, the next big thing for Sujo, the next big step for us is what? What's happening well, right now? What's happening next? What is happening now is that we're going to do the final tests of the, uh, the water filter technology. Yeah. When that works, um, we go ahead with the multi-stakeholder approach. Yeah. So we have done, from proportion and done together, we have done a community insight study. So we know what kind of needs we can address. Yeah. The next step is, okay, how can we make a feasible business model out of this? Yeah. So when we talk about creating more awareness about health care, uh, hygiene and nutrition uh, and we want to um, create more campaigning on that so w- which partners do we need then yeah. uh, and in the next step we're going to uh, go to Dhaka uh, and go into the field again and talk with a lot of uh, different organizations that can help us in this yeah. so we're trying to create partners Yeah, great well good to see you again Thank thanks you. thanks